Sal Caldwell Chorus, a beautiful song. Both the chorus and the band members, I hope that you realize the songs you are singing about, the songs you are playing, are only as a result of the men and women that are sitting between you. I hope you understand that your freedom to attend that school every day is due to these same men and women. Thank you for taking the time today to honor them. Our next speaker is going to be Daryl Cornett. Good morning. How about another round of applause for the, the band and the chorus on each side? Of it's good to be back home again. Uh, I see some old friends, I see some older friends. And uh, just a little side note here, uh, Tracy Townsend and I played football, baseball, basketball, you name the sport in this very gym out on these fields uh, many years ago. And uh, we were very, very young starting out. And uh, someone else uh, in this room was our coach. I won't give a name now, but he's part of that older group now. So, uh, so MD appreciates you. So, uh, I had a chance to talk to him a little bit today and get caught up. Uh, welcome to all in attendance today. It is my distinct honor to stand before you as we well honor our veterans, families, and those in the community who support our military. Uh, again, as he said, my name is Daryl Cornett. Uh, I'm the Chief Master Sergeant Air Force uh, Reserve. Uh, I'm the Command Chief of the 916th Air Refuel Wing down in Seymour Dawson. Uh, I am assigned to the Air Force Reserve, but I've been on active duty orders for several years now, it seems like. Um, for, for the last three years, I've been going and away for about two years. So I periodically get home and uh, I enjoy coming to events like this and seeing family members and friends and everyone that, uh, that's here to celebrate. Before I get started, I'd like to acknowledge uh, a couple of things. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Dr. Carolyn Burns. Thank you, ma'am. Where's the city manager, Jerry Church, at? I saw him here this morning and talked to him. There he is, he's hiding in the back. Thank you, sir, for having us. Grand Falls City Council, thank you. Everybody that's on the council, thank you for having us. And thank you for the uh, distinguished visitors, friends, and family members. Additionally, I'd be remiss if I didn't do this, I'd like to thank my parents for their support over here. I'd like to also thank uh, my wife, Nikki, and my children, Tyler and Emily, for all their support and every question I hope that I wasn't able to tell them where I was going, how long I would be gone, or why I had to leave. And especially during those times when I wasn't able to celebrate and attend those special occasions as a family. Thank you for your understanding. Finally, I'd like to recognize those family members who have supported our veterans throughout the years. If you're, the, if you're a family member of a veteran, I want you to stand, please. If you're related to a, a, a veteran, please stand. Thank you. heroes that uh, keep the family actually together and, and shows us the burdens of uh, what we have to go through. You're a valuable asset to our nation and we thank you. Today, today we are gathered here to celebrate and give thanks to our veterans. There's active duty members, guardsmen, and reservists who have raised their hands to defend our country. November 11th is set aside to honor and celebrate that 1% of society that has a unique opportunity to wear the cloth of our nation. Approximately 41 million Americans have served in our nation's armed forces since General George Washington commanded the Continental Army. There are approximately 19.1 million veterans living today, and that continues to decrease every year to keep that in mind. 1.4 million are active duty service members. That's less than 1% of all of the U.S. adults. The largest group of living veterans are Vietnam veterans. Thank you, Vietnam veterans. And the median age of Veterans Day is 65 years old. I'd like to repeat something to you. The veterans know what this is. And everyone up here in our presence today have said this. I state your full name, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me. 
according to the regulations and the uniform code of military justice. So God be God. Let those words sink in for a moment. Words of so much loyalty and meaning that most cannot comprehend. Words so valuable that no amount of money can buy. It's a public statement that you're pledging your allegiance to the Constitution of the United States of America before God and man. That's the code our veterans live by. It's not an easy standard to live, to live up to at times, but it is a commitment. Once a veteran commits to that oath and completes their service, we as a nation owe them a debt of gratitude and respect. Most veterans, like myself, do not go out looking for handouts or thank yous uh, for our service. In fact, when someone thanks me for my service, I always respond with, thank you for your support. To me, that's what's most important. Jose Harris once said, a veteran is someone who at one point in their life wrote a blank check made payable to the United States of America for an amount of, up to, and including his or her life. That is honor. And there are way too many people in this country today that don't understand that fact. At this very moment, we have hundreds of thousands of airmen, space guardians, marines, soldiers, sailors, and coast guardsmen in every corner of the globe ensure that we are the dominant force on land, at sea, in the air, and in space. All of them wrote a blank check payable to the United States of America the day they took the oath and listened. They are the barbed wire that separates the sheep from the wolves and stand ready to give their lives for our freedoms and our future. I am thankful for each and every American that has stepped forward and answered the nation's call over the last 247 years, from our war of independence in 1775 to the recent operations in Afghanistan and into the future as we face new threats. Speaking of Afghanistan, 11 years ago today, I woke up at Marvel Airfield in Afghanistan. A pretty quaint luxury resort located at the base of the Hindu Kush Mountains. And those that's ever been there, you know it's not, so that's a good one. You can laugh. But uh, the night before, uh, my night before was spent flying on a C-17. If you don't know what that is, that's a very large uh, cargo aircraft. And my other brothers from the other services have probably been on before. Uh, flew in from uh, Bishkek, Kurdistan, uh, doing our final push in Afghanistan. I was with 150 Army brothers and sisters as we dodged our PT rounds from the Taliban and performed a combat tactical landing in the rain. Imagine being in a 500,000 pound airplane and corkscrewed it into the ground from several thousand feet in the air, safely. Uh, I thought it was pretty fun, but uh, that was the one time where, uh, in my whole career, that the Army was more afraid than the Air Force was. <laughs> I trust our pilots. Let me briefly talk about how we can honor those who have served this great nation. The free meals and discounts are small, small tokens of appreciation that have been lost to our veterans. However, there are more important ways to honor these men and women who have sacrificed so much. Let me go through a few of them real quickly. First, let us all live a life that makes their service worthy. In other words, make the service count for something. Second, let us respect and love one another as we should. We have our differences of opinions in many areas. Many areas. But we can still have civil discourse throughout our disagreements. Third, uphold our foundation of beliefs that our forefathers provided for us. Have a sense of duty, honor, and country, and an obligation to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. President John F. Kennedy said it best when he said, that's not what your country can do for you. That's what you can do for your country. Fourth, live a moral and ethical life, meaning live a life beyond reproach. And finally, understand that we all live in the best country in the world because of those whose shoulders we stand on today, our veterans. Do not allow them to serve in vain. On a personal note, I love wearing this uniform. Probably won't anybody's ever for them. And I love pouring in our young members at the base. It thrills me to death to watch these people come in from the basic training tech school and, and teach them some of the old ways that some of us have had to, had to live by over the years. But uh, they, they're what keeps me motivated. Uh, they're the future of this great nation, and there's some good young people out there that's doing it. Without them, uh, we would surely fail, without a doubt. I regretfully, regrettably have a few years left before I have to retire take off the uniform. Notice I said I have to take it off. 
because there is an age limit. And uh, I'm racing towards it pretty quickly. Uh, many ask how much longer I'm going to I plan on serving. I always respond with this, and I mean it when I say it. I wish I could serve another lifetime. I really do. That's how much I enjoy it. But I know that's not possible. Just a season in my life, and I'm going to go while I'm there. As we look into the future, we want to be challenged by our peer and near peer adversaries. This includes countries like China, Russia, Iran, North Korea. This will require some of the brightest and bravest service members to be ready to take the fight for the enemy. The members that will see this threat uh, arise are our youngest veterans that's currently serving. These young veterans need the support of our families, our friends, communities, business partners, and most importantly, our most experienced active and retired veterans. You're still needed. If that does come to pass, it's not going to be a pretty sight, trust us. In closing, I'd like to remind everyone one thing that I said earlier. A veteran is someone who at one point in their life wrote a blank check, made payable to the United States of America. For an amount of up to and including his or her life, that is honor. And there are way too many people in this country today who don't understand that fact. As we depart, as we depart from this meeting, please understand that fact. Please understand it. Thank you for allowing me to be here today. May God bless each of you and your families, this community, our veterans, and the United States of America.
see um, the amount of service that each of these speakers have has served over their their time in the military. They're not going to tell you this themselves, but uh, we should definitely honor uh, them by knowing what they've done. And that there's a great write-up on each of them inside of, of your program. So we will at this time welcome our last speaker, Jerry Bader. Hey, so I, uh, I really appreciate uh, you having me here today. Um, I will tell you, it's, uh, it's usually terrible to go last, especially if you've got some great speakers like you've had already. So, unfortunately, about the rank, we usually go last. So I'm going to make some adjustments because they pretty much said uh, all the smart guy things. So I'm going to adjust. Yeah, I was going to be in the band when I was in high school, and then I realized I don't have any lips, and uh, I wanted to play the trumpet. You guys are amazing, and I've already talked to the, the chorus and. You know, my mom's a singer. She sings gospel music all over the place. And I will tell you, I've tried it, and it's horrible. It's like a horror movie. So uh, it sounds a lot like Cadence. So I uh, really appreciate y'all. Appreciate all the effort that goes into days like this. Um, you know, it's an honor for me to stand here. It's a privilege, in, a, in fact, to uh, represent our veterans and to speak on their behalf. You know, they're an amazing group of Americans. You know, talking about that, that bio and... Most of you look like me, that you probably need some glasses to read that font, but I, I will tell you, uh, I've been in 35 years. I currently command a little over 2,500 soldiers, and uh, like the chief said, you know, the best job I could ever have. I mean, I love serving this nation and her people. So much, in fact, as both my sons could have done anything, they could have been anything they wanted to be. Great athletes, super intelligence, and they uh, both have chosen to serve in the Army as Army officers. And we need good Christian leaders like those two boys. Now, with that being said, I would ask you to continue to pay your taxes because they do like to eat. So uh, I would appreciate that. So I've changed this up a little bit to make sure I wasn't saying the same thing, uh, although important. But I'll tell you, I'd ask you, uh, why do we celebrate Veterans Day, right? Uh, we're not the only country that celebrates it, but I will tell you, we're one of the first. Started back in uh, 1918, at the end of World War I, pretty important time in American history. And we designated it as Armistice Day. And it was to remember those that fought in World War I and unfortunately those we lost in World War I. And go forward to 1919, President Wilson on the 11th month, the 11th day, the 11th hour, made it an official holiday, Armistice Day. Again, remembering those that we lost and those that fought in World War I. Fast forward to 1954, after World War II and the Korean War, we initiated what we call today Veterans Day. It was designated at that point, and it was a day that we remember all men and women that served in uniform. Separate Memorial Day is that day we mourn. This is to be a day of celebration. So I would ask you to remember that. If you'll allow me uh, time for a quick story, I'll tell you, I was a young boy raised in South Muddy Creek, in Nebo, North Carolina, if you know where that's at, up north, up near Lake James, we speak kind of the same language down here. Um, I will tell you, I used to run through my yard and I wanted to be a superhero. And I would chase my sister Belinda through the yard and I would yell, Mighty Man. And it immediately made me faster, stronger. I would jump much higher. Sometimes I'd blow right by her. Now, as a young man in high school, you can imagine it was frowned upon at McDowell High for me to yell at as I ran down the football field. So I kind of kept it to myself. So I didn't get made fun of, but I, uh, I would whisper it occasionally and I would truly get faster and stronger. But reality set in and I became a high school senior at 139 pounds, and I realized how ridiculous I was going to look in tights with my skinny little legs. So I said, I'm going to go in the Army. So as a 17 year old man, I went in the Army as a young E1, a private. Now you can imagine, I was surrounded by Vietnam vets, true professionals, leaders that had been forged and shaped by conflict and war. They were serious professionals, and they were dedicated to take a guy, a young man like me, and to turn me into a soldier, a warrior, in fact, for this great nation. That was a tough time for a young boy from Nebo, North Carolina, because I'll be honest, I hadn't run more than about 100 yards without stopping, and now I'm in the Army where we run everywhere. We even ran to church, and they yelled the whole time. They didn't yell while we were in church, but they sure yelled at me when I got out of church. It wasn't long before I realized the real heroes that I wanted to be like, they were all standing beside me. Those were the heroes that when I played as a young boy in Nebo, 
They were the ones that I wanted to be just like them. You know, we had the veterans stand and raise your hand. I will tell you, <clears throat> I can't thank you enough for your service, your willingness to put the uniform on. I will tell you, these men and women are not comics. They're not heroes in a comic book. They're not actors in a movie. They're your true American hero. They truly are the veterans that we should all look up to and want to emulate. I'd ask you to please take the time this weekend as we get past Veterans Day. Give the time to take lunch with your family or friends and you say a uh, prayer and remember why Veterans Day is so special to America. I would ask you to pray for those Americans who have made a choice to leave the comfort of their home and put on a uniform that represents a nation. Those who right now, as I speak to you in this crowd, are standing all over the world. They're standing there with their back against the wall, standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with an evil man, saying, none shall pass. They truly are. They make certain that no evil men will make it to your doorstep tonight. I'd ask that you remember, our military members are often serving out there as the light in the darkest of places. They do not waver as they protect our nation's people from an enemy that we'd all like to believe doesn't exist. But unfortunately, they do. Please enjoy that blanket of security today and tonight. And remember, that's been provided by, for us by numerous veterans every day, all day, for many years. So let us embrace our ability to gather like we are here today, worship as we see appropriate, and speak out loud without any chance of reprisal. I believe that is what a veteran would ask you to do because they're an amazing example of humanity. And that is why we call them veterans. So in closing, I'll leave you with this. You know, some people may spend their entire life unsure of what they do and what they have done in the past to contribute to this America, to make it the great nation that we all live in. I will tell you, veterans should never question their part in keeping America the nation we all love. They have ensured that we remain one nation under God and that we remain indivisible as a people and that we continue to provide that cherished liberty and justice for all. Veterans here today, God bless you and your families for what you have done and what you will do. God bless these United States of America and thank each and every one of you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry, for those words. As you heard each of these men speak, they each spoke in different words about those who had written a blank check, those they witnessed on the battlefield lose their life, those that gave up a portion of their life for this country that we love. This time we're going to honor those that didn't make it home. They wrote the check in full and they gave it all for us. If any of these members that we read are a family member of yours, please stand when you hear their name mentioned. If your family member was killed in action and it's not on this list, please take time to think of that person during the reading of this, these names and know that we are equally as thankful for their service as well. Murray R. Fisher Isaac Party Porch Lewis Lester Spann, Corporal Joe L. Anderson, U.S. Army, Private First Class Rex Roy Annis, U.S. Army, Private First Class Walter J. Bolick, U.S. Army, Private Paul Boyd, U.S. Army, SFC Calvin Compton, U.S. Navy, Private Glenn R. Corbett, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Ted Everett Hall, U.S. Navy. Private First Class William E. Hall, U.S. Army. Private Carl Eugene Hahn, U.S. Army. First Lieutenant Joe W. Iker, U.S. Army. Private Glenn A. Perlier, U.S. Army. Sergeant Earl C. Hoovey, U.S. Army. 
Sergeant Walter H. Poovey, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Percy Robinson, U.S. Army. Second Lieutenant Robert Sigmund, U.S. Army. Corporal George Slayton, Jr., United States Marine Corps. Corporal John Lee Smith, U.S. Army. Private First Class Charlie L. Starnes, U.S. Army. Private First Class Coy Triplett, Jr., United States Marine Corps. Staff Sergeant James G. Watson, U.S. Army. Private James H. Williams, U.S. Army. Private First Class Glenn Mitchell, United States Marine Corps. Corporal Owen C. Pollard, U.S. Army. Private William J. Lefevers, U.S. Army. First Lieutenant Joseph Sterl Smith. Private First Class Scotty H. Ray, United States Marine Corps. Sergeant Terry C. Williams, United States Marine Corps. Senior Master Sergeant David Reed. Sergeant L. Robert Bowen. If Kara and Michaela would come forward now and place the wreath for us. Both Kara and Michaela are both have veterans in both of their families, and we thank them for their time today. If you would stand, please. Grace in place taps. I will call stand to attention and then present arms to honor those that have passed before us. So all veterans please stand to attention. Present arms. Thank each of you for coming today, for our speakers, for our band and chorus, for the town and all the work that goes into setting this up. We thank you. We thank you for families coming to support, but most of all, we thank you, men and women who serve. We love you. We thank you for what you did for our country, and that we honor you today and as always. This concludes our service for today. <laughs>